What happens in the sky affects life down here on Earth. The celestial compass shows you how and guides your way with astrology you can use from professional astrologer Kathy Beale. Every episode features her light-hearted practical forecasts and navigational tips, blended with humor, optimism, and a love of patterns, symbolism, and pop culture references. Kathy translates technicalities into concepts that apply to real life. You'll learn how the current moment ties to where we've been, from the recent past to cycles that last happened years ago, and get a look at where we're heading. And much more, from special topics to special guests. The Celestial Compass, enlightening, entertaining, and empowering. Here's your host, Kathy Beale. Greetings, Earthlings. This is Kathy Beale of EmpowermentUnlimited.net with a very special Nearly Everything is in the Sky retrograde edition of Celestial Compass. Uh, before we get into the meat of our program, which is about relationships, everybody's favorite topic, I want to just briefly update what's going on with the astrology here at the beginning of September 2023. Venus is slowing to uh, a turnaround. It's finishing the retrograde that it's had since July 22nd, but we're not going to feel like things are really loosening up just yet because, one, Jupiter goes retrograde as soon as she stations direct, and most importantly, Mercury is still retrograde as well as most everything else. Uh, so, Consider the first two month, uh, weeks of the month as a really good time to look at the details of your life, reorganize all the little things that you rely on, the stuff in your environment that you always brush off and say, ooh, I really ought to deal with that sometime. This is a really good time to deal with those things. Anything that trips you up right now, take it as kind of a signal of, hmm, my life would really go a lot better if this were different. There's a lot you can uncover, redo, finish. It's great for cleaning up the stuff that's been sitting on your dining table for months. I'm speaking quite personally here. And, um, just dealing with stuff. And when we get to the middle of the month, 15th, roughly, 16th in some places, the Virgo new moon is a place where we can park a lot of what we have figured out, discovered, what we want to do differently, how we want things to go ahead. So know that there's a timetable at work right now that may not have anything to do with what you think you're going to be doing in your life. And Laughing is a really good way to deal with it all, which is part of what I have been doing just before the show with our guest. We are speaking today with Catherine Andron on relationships and especially the Aquar uh, Aries Libra eclipses. Uh, she is the founder of The Love Astrologer and Heaven and Earth Healing. She's an astrologer, artist, and healer who has presented for the Omega Institute, Kepler College, the Organization of Professional Astrologers, and she's the former events coordinator for Astrology Hub, which is where we got to know of the, each other's existence. Her articles and contributions have been published at astro.com, Brides Magazine, The Evolving Astrologer Magazine, and again, Astrology Hub, she embodies over 25 years of professional experience with heartfelt, intuitive wisdom. Welcome, Catherine. Kathy, thank you so much for having me on your program today. I'm delighted to speak with you. Yay, and I'm thrilled you're here, and it's nice to finally actually meet voice to voice. Yes, me too. <laughs> I'd like to start with your origin story. How did you come to astrology? You know, interesting. I would say that it was my love of the sky first and my love of watching the moon that led me to astrology. So even as a young child, I, I walked to school and I saw the moon go through its phases and cycles. And as a young adult, I lived in New Mexico in Santa Fe in the late 90s. And um, 
it's called the land of enchantment for a reason. New Mexico is called the land of enchantment for a reason because there's just epic, epic views of the sky. So before I fell in love with astrology, I really attuned myself to watching the sky. Um, later, when I moved to the big island of Hawaii and I lived as a Hawaii Island resident for 15 years, I met someone who was uh, formerly my partner and an astrologer. And he introduced me to the book called Shamanic Astrology Workbook. That book was written by Daniel DiMario and Caitlin Castile. So my, my, um, my first love for astrology came for or came through direct relationship and connection with the sky. Wow. All right. So yeah. did you then, <laughs> did, did you study at a school? Did you just go off on a, I'm going to read everything I can get my hands on path? How did it proceed? My, my path in the beginning was very experiential. So um, I am a licensed massage therapist. And I started looking at the charts of my clients. So I had a mentor and I started very slowly, just like learning a language, I started very slowly learning astrology experientially with charts. And then later on, I met Maurice Fernandez on the Big Island and I went to his conference called the River of Stars and participated in that conference and started taking a handful of courses with him in the evolutionary astrology path. So I would say that my influences are in part through shamanic astrology, which is direct relationship with the sky, modern Western astrology, because I care about what goes on in someone's internal landscape, and then through the evolutionary astrology influence, which is heavily... Uh, emphasize on let's look at your north and south node let's look at who you are as a soul because why do I do astrology anyways because I feel that it's a tool that really supports people in their self-awareness and our growth and how I grow as a soul in this world this lifetime so that's some of my journey as learning both experientially and you know kind of deep dive in some classes and courses so it sounds like it's full spectrum immersion, and then you convey that now in your work, coming at it from all kinds of different directions and levels. I like that. I would say that, you know, it took, personally, it took about two years to really learn how to read the chart, you know? I mean, everyone has their own journey with how they learn astrology, but you know, I would stare at the symbols, I would draw them. And um, I think another component that may make my, my lens or view of astrology unique is that I'm also a healer. So I went to school in New Mexico for a holistic healing practitioner program with an emphasis on massage therapy. So because I work directly with clients, and it's, it's been 25 years now. So, Kathy, this is like a really interesting turning point time for me. I'm in my Chiron return. Ah. I'm turning 50 this year, and I've been studying, practicing, teaching astrology, and um, doing my healing work for a little over 25 years. So I feel, I feel like I'm in a new chapter of my life personally and professionally with this year. And that certainly fits with what's coming with the eclipses, but I'm getting ahead of us here. Um, well, I'm one very the, excited to talk about the eclipses because one of these eclipses is the day after my birthday, so I've been really attuned to <laughs> the last year. That tells me something forward, right there. So. <laughs> well, before we get to that, before we get to that, could you tell us how the uh, mantle of the love astrologer came to be? Well, in, in fact, it's actually our mutual friend, Donna Woodwell, one of the uh, fellow astrologers who introduced us and who's also on that initial team of when uh, the Astrology Hub was just getting started. Donna and I were supporting Amanda at the time, kind of helping her find the astrologers for this new project seven or eight years ago. Um, so the Love Astrologer came to me, in fact, because... Um, uh, a colleague of ours, she was writing daily horoscopes, and she's like, I'm swamped, I need help. 
I said, I don't know how to write horoscopes. And at first, honestly, Kathy, I was like, horoscope, really? <laughs> you know, like, I care about your soul. I care about your life <laughs> mission. I care about your journey. Do you want to write horoscopes? So, so, then I just, so then I put the power of the pause on. I was like, hmm, well, what if my words can touch so many people? What if I can use my Gemini rising? What if I can use, you know, my gifts with my words to touch people's lives? So I said, okay, teach me. And, and she said to me at the time, to Catherine, half of your planets are ruled by Venus. You are the love astrologer. So it's almost like she gifted it to me, you know. And my name is Catherine Andrin. Catherine can be spelled, as you know, Kathy can be spelled, you know, five or six different ways. It's easy to remember. So the Love Astrologer was born by a friend inviting me to write horoscopes. I was born by um, her saying, well, when you look at your chart, it's half of the planets ruled by Venus. And so in my private practice, I use the Love Astrologer as not only looking at, you know, people's relationship pattern, but I look at what you love, who you love, are you living a life that you love? So it's very holistic. I use the word, the love astrologer for my clients and uh, customers to come see me. So we look at both vocational pathways as well as relationship pathways. I would imagine then that Venus's retrograde through Leo has been very rich for this. Indeed. <laughs> <laughs> Since it's I been mean, lighting up passions, especially, or where they're not sparking. Anyway. I'm actually delighted that the article that I submitted for OPA, Organization of Professional Astrologers, did get selected to be on the homepage of astro.com. So, my, uh, this Venus retrograde cycle right now, you know, Venus is currently in Leo. It's retracting, retreating, moving through, uh, Leo in the sky story. It's moving through my third house of communication. So <laughs> I've been spending extra time with my brother and sister this summer, like consciously connecting with my siblings as well as reconsidering, reevaluating how do I want to deliver the message of astrology or what is it that I really love and how to communicate that. So thank you for, again, inviting me, participating with you today for this opportunity. I suspect that your uh, ascendant is on my south node. That's probably part of it, right? Oh, really? I have a Gemini rise. I know. You said that. And I went, oh, okay. Uh, <laughs> it, it all works. It all works. So let's let's just talk about We've got this gear shift in eclipses going on this year. We're yes. transitioning from eclipses in the signs of Taurus and Scorpio into eclipses in the signs of Aries and Libra. And the North Node has gone from the Venus-ruled sign of Taurus to the Mars-ruled sign of um, Aries, do you, can you, what can you say about just that, that shift from the I, me, mine resources uh, emphasis to the me against you or what are we anyway or I am here and you are there? I have various smart ass ways of, uh, oh, good. Dis of describing what's going on here. What do you, what, what do you see this gear shift as, as doing for us? Well, I, I think. Uh, just to take a step back, what I think is important to honor, acknowledge, and recognize here is that with the with the shift of the Taurus Scorpio axis and the Aries Libra axis, both of the ruling planets are Venus and Mars, right? So um, we're going to pay really close attention to what Venus and Mars are doing in the sky story and what Venus and Mars are doing in our own personal birth charts. So um, I just, I, I thought that was an interesting, you know, connecting point about this. Um, Venus, naturally, she's the ruler of Taurus and Libra. So we, that en attention and emphasis about my values, what I love, who I love, what's most important, what matters most, Okay. 
And the Mars in the sky story, or Mars in our our astrology, is the planet ruler for uh, Scorpio, as well as um, Aries, right? So what drives us? What's motivating us? What are my, what's the driving force? So... Did I answer the question, Kathy? I just, right, I sure. Got, and, I, I got stuck into like the Venus and Mars mystery. Like, as well, like, anything involving Venus and Mars, it's going to get really sexy. So. Well, one thing I find fascinating is we're going from Venus ruling the North Node and Mars, in the traditional sense, ruling the South Node, to Mars ruling the North Node and Venus ruling the South Node. So there's a real a constant balance between uh, receptive and assertive or masculine and feminine. Mm. Yeah. yeah. Love and um, desire. I don't know. Uh, it just seems to me that we're in a, it's the, it's in the same neck of the woods in terms of the symbolic journey from the past couple of years to what we're going on through until March of 2025 with the Aries Libra eclipses. But there's a different flavor to it, right? So okay. the, the flavor, the flavor, in, in part, might be um, with Mars ruling North Node now and Aries is about what are what are my action steps? How do I assert myself? Right? With the Venus ruling Libra, the South Node might be some. Uh, recognition or realignment with all the ways I may have made compromises, right? So there might be a, a strong invitation. Here's the deal. Yeah, uh-huh. <laughs> I, I think I know where you're going. Astrology, we're talking, we're got a, it's a lot of thoughts, it's a lot of concepts, right? We're talking about concepts, myths, magic, and math, right? In some ways. When I like we're that. Looking at, when we're looking at Mars as a ruler of um, Aries and the North Node in Aries, that's, that to me feels like a call for action. Well, what am I going to do? I'm watching insanity in the news cycle or whatever is going on at home in the boardroom or the bedroom, right? Whatever is going on. What, are you, what is your action step now? What are we going to do? Because we can't just talk about it, whatever it is. Now's our time for making some action. Maybe not the next two weeks while we have all these retrograde planets. I want to think before I act, but as a theme, as a theme for these next 18 months, you know, and I, I think it's a fair question and it's a good question is where we are for on a personal level, or on a planet level. It's what am I going to do? What is my action step? That's where it's I go se- with it. It seems to me there's a, a really marked emphasis on the individual end of any relationship equation. In other words, not sitting back and, in, as some Libra sometimes can do, trying to play all the little games in your head of figuring out all the things the other person might want and trying to set the playing field up to address that. Instead, it's acting much more from your own interests, your own autonomy, your own needs would what do you think of that? And and the the component around, you know, there's there can be a quality of energy of Libra that says, I don't want to rock the boat. I don't want to stir things up, right? I don't be being aware of all the times that you don't want to upset the apple cart, <laughs> so to speak, right? So there's mm-hmm. there's a there's a there's a time for being quiet and there's a time for making noise. There's a time for smile and nod and get through the grocery store. And there's a time for like saying what you need to say and making your move. So, I think there's really heavy on the saying what you need to say and making your move. Right. I mean, and <laughs> and like the, with the Chiron is also in Aries, right? So as the nodal access, as we're moving through this next year and a half timeline, um, and we look at the eclipses, you know, going forward, um, 
there's a, the quality of energy around Chiron, which is the bridge, right? Chiron's in Aries right now, and Chiron is the place and point in the sky that lives in between our visible planet and the outer planet. So my understanding and my learning about Chiron is how are we bridging the world? How are we bridging our thoughts, our beliefs, our bigger dream to actionable reality? I just have to ask. <laughs> yeah, no, I think that's good. <laughs> All right. Well, do you want to uh, you want to talk about? Well, do you one thing? Do you see a um, like a, a storyline? from the Aries solar eclipse at 29 Aries that set this off in April of this year to the final eclipse in the cycle of March 25? Do you see kind of like a big picture of where we're heading? Hold on just a moment, March 25. So... If it's something you haven't thought about, yeah. that's okay. I don't want to... Well, wanna... I, what I did think about, and I, what I found interesting is that the eclipse at the end of uh, Aries earlier this year, the one you mentioned, was squared off to Pluto. Right. right. So squared off to Pluto. Pluto, we know, is the power point. Pluto, as I understand, we, Pluto is the non-negotiable force of transformation. Right. Many of our planets are forces of nature. Right. So we began the cycle with the North Node, the nodal axis at the end degrees of Aries Libra, squaring off, making the right degree angle to potent Pluto. So that to me serves as a symbol for what are we going to change on a really deep, deep level. Mm -hmm. And as I looked ahead for us, um, Pluto will be making an aspect pattern. This is later on, Kathy. This is later on where Pluto is going to be opposite Mars. And right. Mars, is, Mars is going to go retrograde in Leo, okay? Mm -hmm. So this is toward, toward the end of the cycle. So once again, there's a, what I see as a theme is this, it's transformation of action, right? If Mars, if if Mars is about action and how we do what we do, and Pluto has a symbol around depth of transformation, um, there's a call, the call to action is making transformational action steps. <laughs> so mm -hmm. that's to make scenes. And then how would we do it gracefully, right? Well, if Jupiter is in Taurus and we have all the, the south node energy in Libra, how do we make these changes with grace? How do we make them with ease? How do we make them with, yeah, grace is the word. Mm -hmm. Kindness, simplicity. Mm -hmm. you know. So it's, it what sounds... Do you, what did you notice or what did you see in those cycles? Well, <laughs> what I, I, I started with, yes, I, I, the, the, uh, Pluto is square the nodes from that first eclipse uh, at, in the middle of April this year, uh, the really dramatic one that set this off, but it remained it kind of, tr it's been traveling in a square to the nodes as the nodes have changed signs and as Pluto has retrograded back into Capricorn. So this f first segment of it has been about fundamental, unavoidable metamorphosis, which is another way of saying coming in contact with, with a force that is non-negotiable change. Uh, and it's also brought a whole lot of fears up. And I found it fascinating that this handover of the eclipse cycles is coinciding with Venus retrograde in Leo. And at the end of this eclipse family, Mars will begin its retrograde in Leo. So there's something intensely yeah. personal and also um, very aligned with how we express and radiate out who we truly are. So the beginning of it with the Venus retrograde might have had more to do with how much do you value yourself, where are you getting validated, what passions in you have you let slip behind, what do you want to bring back in, 
And then at the end of it, with Mars and Leo, perhaps there is a, all right, how do you now move forward in the world uh, in congruence with what's really going on in your fiery core? How's that? I love it. I love it. And and, uh, the business of Leo, (laughs) right? We're talking about Venus and Mars, also Leo is how do we really align with the depth of our heart? Right. I mean, you asked me earlier about the love astrologer and like, yeah, it's also a catchy name and people remember it. But it's like, what do, how do I really attune to the depth of the heart? OK, so now we're in now, meaning it's September 2023 and the Venus is going direct on the 4th of September. Right. And then I'll be cruising through um Leo through most of September and the early part of October. But it's like, well, here's an opportunity to reset or realign or reprioritize what are my values, what matters most to my heart. Then when we get to the end of the cycle, as you mentioned, when Mars is in Leo, again, that won't be so, um, where are we there? 2025. Well, for right now, it's just just knowing that it's sort of there. Well, we're talking about the, the bigger picture plan. It's like, how do I take action that's in resonant alignment with my heart? Yeah. Right, right. So this is a very personal journey, and this part of it, with Aries and Libra being where the nodes are and where the eclipses are taking place, uh, the whole thing has a focus on who we are, and how we get along with the people in our lives. Would that be a simplistic way of putting it? Absolutely. And it's good to keep it simple with the Jupiter and Taurus as well. Oh, my, yes. So, well, and keep speaking, keeping it simple, we are at a really good breaking off point uh, right. for, our first, for our first and only break. So please hang with us, people. Ascending Hearts is no ordinary dating site, but a spiritual dating site with a purpose, to link you with your soulmate. We engineer the serendipity so you can trust that you will attune with someone that has the same matching vibration as you. Ascending Hearts, the conscious dating site for the spiritually aware. Try Ascending Hearts for free, ascendinghearts.com. You came across someone struggling with hunger. How would you recognize them? Would you notice an eight-year-old girl who's not excited excited for for summer summer break because she may not be having lunch again until September? Or a war veteran who's having a hard time landing landing a job and getting back on his feet? I am the one in eight Americans who struggle with hunger. I I am hunger hunger in America. America. Hunger can be hard to recognize. Learn why at IamHungerInAmerica.org. Brought to you by Feeding America and the Ad Council. Welcome back to Celestial Compass. We are talking today about relationships with the love astrologer, Catherine Andron. And uh, before the break, we were touching on what the Aries Libra eclipses have in store for us and what they're hmm, impelling us to do, to how to evolve in how we express ourselves and interact with other people. And uh, in in that regard, uh, well, before we get into specific eclipses, is there anything else you'd like to say, Catherine, about the, like, the general overview of what we're in? Or would you like to just get into eclipse by eclipse at this point? Thanks, Kathy. Um, Yeah, so I was really thinking about how we make astrology personal. So, What I'd like to do maybe is just jump into the charts of the next couple of eclipses and then uh, highlight or help people acknowledge where they can find the eclipses in their charts and what we would look for, right? So, for example, the eclipses are in Libra and Aries. So we're going to help people find where their signatures are in their chart. Okay, have at it, please. <laughs> okay, great. <laughs> well, if we look at the next um, eclipse that's coming up, the eclipse that's uh, October 14th. So I have that as a 
solar eclipse. There's an, that's an, that's going to be an annular eclipse. And for those of you who look at timeanddate.com, that's an easy reference point for you to see where you where in the world you can actually see this eclipse and experience this eclipse. And the eclipse is on the new moon, and it falls at 21 degrees Libra. So for any individuals who have a birthday that's on or near October 14th, plus or minus five days either side, and you would look at, hey, if this is my birthday in the middle of April, because that eclipse will touch your chart as well. So any individual who has cardinal energy in the chart, that's Aries Libra, Cancer or Capricorn, this particular eclipse can touch you and touch your chart in an intimate way. So what do we mean by that? And why are eclipses important anyway? Eclipses are important because they serve as a symbol. One planetary body moves in front of another and something goes dark. Something moves into the shadow. So when we eclipse opportunities or eclipses are happening in our sky story, the invitation is the as above, so below, as within, so without. So we're looking at something deeper that's going beneath the surface. Okay. that I, I, I look at it as, I mean, I have found it very useful to look at a solar eclipse as uh, a yeah. new operating system or an upgrade to an existing operating system being installed. And when that happens with your computer or device, it goes down and it goes dark. And it reboots, and something's different when it comes back up. Sometimes you can see Absolutely. what is different really clearly, and sometimes it is in the background. It takes you a while to figure out what it is. I love it. So that's, you know, where we have, I feel like one of the biggest gifts of astrology, Kathy, and for all of our, you know, listeners, people tuning in, is that it helps us create more compassion, right? So if, if, if it's system shut down, right, or if I'm going dark on a symbolic level, personally or professionally, that's like, well, I'm, I'm, we're taking a time out so that something new can reemerge, right? If, we were, if we're unaware or not sure or not clear and things seemingly are falling apart, people can freak out, right? So we know that, oh, I'm, um, my birthday is near an eclipse this year or I have personal planets and points in the middle degrees of the cardinal signs, Cancer, Capricorn, Libra, Aries, then I want to look at my own chart and identify, find those places and points and say, hmm, where is this eclipse going to fall in my own birth chart? I want to look at what house it might fall in. I want to look at those cardinal points to see what areas of my own chart can be ignited or inspired and or empowered by this cycle. So here's a question for you. Can you comment on the fact that the first eclipse in the Aries Libra family occurred in Aries, a solar eclipse, and the second eclipse in Aries, the sign of the North Node, and the second eclipse is occurring in, it's a solar eclipse, again, a reboot, a fresh start, an upgrade, in Libra, which is ruled by Venus. I think that there's something about the balance of the two, like, okay, we, we fixed one, we upgraded one, and now we upgrade the other. What, what do you see? Do You're you see? referring to the April 8th eclipse? Kathy, is that I'm the referring one to the one we were in in the the first one in April that set this off. The oh, one at twenty I'm the sorry. one at okay. twenty nine degrees uh, Aries. So this cycle started with a solar eclipse in Aries, and then the second step in it is a solar eclipse in Libra. Is there right, a and then I'm just going to I'm just going to go forward then because go the ahead. next one, if you don't mind, because oh, it's, it's like a song, right? So it's like if, if the Eclipse series were a song, right, where we have a chorus and a refrain, right, that, like there's another piece of it, and then the next, the next part of the song will be on April 8th, and where the solar eclipse was at 18 degrees Aries, right? So it's Aries, Libra, Aries, <laughs> right, with the, sol with the eclipse cycle. So um, how would we... 
I'm just tuning in actually in this moment with the vibration of individuality, connectingness, and asserting is individuality, you know, and then we come back to the bigger picture of war and peace, really, right? Because mm -hmm. Aries is assertiveness, war, you know, my motivation, where Libra says connection, compromise, peace. So this timeline could potentially serve us again, because it's personally, planetarily, on what motivates me, what's important to me, what's driving me, what do I need to adjust, right? Libra, balance it out, and then redo it or reset it again when we get to the next step, next, uh, possibly spring, about next April. <laughs> and you had mentioned Chiron earlier, next April, when there is that solar eclipse again in Aries. Chiron's in the yeah. neighborhood, right? Absolutely. So that's a, it's pretty tight. There's it it a strong uh, stellium there. So right now, we're, so we're, we're Kathy and I we're, we're acknowledging and honoring the solar eclipse energy. And a solar eclipse is the new moon time, right? So the sun and the moon are aligned very closely with each other, and then the sun will appear to temporarily go dark as the moon moves in front of it from our vantage point here on Earth. When we look ahead to that April 8th solar eclipse, that alignment in our modern astrology is at 18 degrees Aries, okay? And nearby, we have our friend Venus at 4 degrees Aries. The nodal axis is at 15 Aries. Sun, Moon, Chiron are tightly conjoined at 19. And then our friend Mercury is nearby at 24 Aries. So I say that because I'm a geek for numbers and I'm for, you know, um, what makes a chart sing is the geometry. <laughs> with all of those planets and points aligned so close and tightly with Aries and with the emphasis there on Chiron. Again, my understanding around Chiron is that here we have a bridge from the known. Remember, Chiron, Chiron lives in our solar system between the visible planet and the outer planet. Right. Mm -hmm. So if the sun and our moon are aligning near Chiron, that can serve us as a story for making the bridge. Can we bridge the? Uh, can we bridge the individuated needs or bridge the individuated uh, motivations of people or nations to uh, a more peaceful place? <laughs> What is, what is our own personal healing journey or our own personal, this could be very personal in the sense of um, aligning and attuning with our bigger dream, our bigger picture, and, and again, taking the action steps to make it real. That's, that kind of inspires me, actually. Chiron yeah. and here's that sun-moon alignment at... Uh, We've, we've talked about this at we, like astrologers have talked about this dreaming world and the reality world, especially with the Neptune energy in Pisces, right? So it's, mm -hmm. um, that's one of our gifts of astrologers in a way is using these archetypes, energies, and symbols to make our magic in this world, in this year, in this now. And it seems to me with that Aries emphasis, with Venus and Mercury both being there, uh, that our that brings the relationship, with Venus there, that brings the relationship peace into that new moon, even though Mars isn't there, and it also brings our perspective and our thinking and how we communicate with each other with Mercury being in the mix. So it, it makes it real down here on Earth in a big way. During, during that timeline also, when, we, when I say during that timeline, when we're looking at March, April, May of next year, 2024, is when our friends Jupiter and Uranus get pretty tight. 
in um, <laughs> in Taurus. So, you know, eclipses by their nature, I, my experience over, you know, nearly 25 years of studying, practicing, teaching astrology is that they are catalysts for change. They're catalysts, like you said, for a, for an upgrade in the system. Mm-hmm. And with the Jupiter Uranus, it's, it's exciting. It's maybe a little scary, but that anything can happen. Like anything can happen now because Jupiter expands whatever it touches and Uranus accelerates. So there's a, there's a definitive um, uh, invitation for accelerated change in the early part of next year, 2024. And it seems to me that that Jupiter um, Uranus conjunction enhances, amplifies the volatility that's inherent in any eclipse. So Mm -hmm. uh, take your vitamins, everybody. (laughs) The stuff there is super important. Absolutely. So have you looked beyond that? Uh, let's see. Just a moment. I did, but I just need to find it. <laughs> All right, while you're looking. The cards uh, are in front of me. Right. Okay. Um, so, um, back, yeah, backtracking is just for a moment. So, two weeks, we, we were just acknowledged the solar eclipses, but there's also the lunar eclipse, right? And there's a little bit of a trick there. Um, Prior to the April 8th solar eclipse is March 24th or 25th, depending where you are in the world, there's a lunar eclipse at five degrees Libra, right? So maybe I'll just kind of highlight the, the point, you know, where where are these eclipses falling, right, Kathy? So sure, for go example, ahead. So for example, the, um, sure, I got this right. This is kind of cool when we look at the numbers. There's a solar, the solar eclipse on October 14th is at 21 Libra. And then when we jump ahead to, the, to April, the uh, solar eclipse is at 19 Aries, right? So mid degrees of the, of the cardinal energy is energized and activated. When we look at the lunar eclipses, now, the lunar eclipse, the next lunar eclipse coming up is October 28th, okay? And it's, it, it, it falls back into Aries, into Scorpio, Taurus, all right? So um, five, I have that at five degrees, Taurus is the right. partial lunar eclipse, right? So it's like a little dance. There's a little cha-cha going on, okay? We're dancing. We're, you know, it, it's near, it's still near the lunar nodes. The lunar nodes are in Aries Libra, but we just kind of dance back into Scorpio Taurus there for a moment. And that, that lunar eclipse is at five degrees Taurus, right? So taking note for individuals who have early degrees of the fixed signed energy, Scorpio, Taurus, Leo, Aquarius, not in that order. <laughs> when we jump ahead and now look at the next lunar eclipse, if that's fair, you said, have you looked further? Well, the other lunar eclipse is at five degrees Libra. The lunar eclipse is in, at the end of March. So depending where you are in the world, it's March 24th or 25th, 2024. And that lunar eclipse is at five degrees Libra. Okay. Well, look at there. So, for, so look at your, you know, look at your own chart. Look at your client's chart. Who's got stuff happening around five degrees? What, what clients, what charts have planets and points around the 20 degree mark? And I always do plus or minus five. I might say for eclipses, sometimes they say keep a tighter orb, but I'm a, I'm kind of a big fan of Rick Tarnas. He's a wide orb person. <laughs> you know, I, uh, when you have solar or lunar events, I think you can look up to about five, uh, five or ten degrees for an orb. Does that do you, does that make sense? We're we're looking at a bigger oh, picture yeah. right, in our right, chart, right. or how this? Why am I saying that? How this chart might touch us. And so, as a body worker, as a massage therapist, 
in addition to an astrologer, you know, when I speak about these um, astrological events, when we speak about a planet or point going retrograde or going direct, we talk about these eclipses, I look at it almost like it's an acupressure session, right? If I were to receive an act of a bodywork session or receive some acupressure, the therapist is touching my body and it's energizing and activating places and parts of me. Well, if an eclipse is happening and it's falling on a place or part of your birth chart, it's energizing and activating that planet in your chart or that house. So that part of you becomes energized or empowered for a certain amount of time. (laughs) And what I love about astrology is that it gives us, again, that mathematical component. These stories, these transformational cycles, they have a beginning, a middle, and an end. And the degree marks, the, the specificities in our birth chart can give us clues about um, um, directly what areas of life are energized by these eclipses. I hope that was helpful. <laughs> well, the degrees are always fascinating to pay attention to. And I, I, they, they set up little dots, I think, that you can start that you can connect and see, okay, here to here to here. And it's fascinating that the Taurus Scorpio eclipses are wrapping up with a wrapping up energy of a lunar eclipse in a sign that is ruled by Venus, which is Taurus. And then Mm -hmm. the first lunar eclipse in the Aries Libra cycle is at the same degree in a sign ruled by Venus. Ruled by Venus. (laughs) So there's a definite there's a definite story here. It it might be, uh, you know, a second verse where there's a a, where it modulates or there's a key you know there's a key change or something. But yeah, there's a connection here. There's a connection, and you can just watch the clockwork and connect the dots and go. Oh, I see what this means. Or not. Right. <laughs> we, uh, you, you asked me if I had looked further ahead, and then I. Yes. I, 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 so, just an, an another. Uh, my Jupiter is an Aquarius, so sometimes I go far out there. So, <laughs> um, October 2nd, 2024, that's another year away from now when we're speaking, but that's another annular solar eclipse, and that happens at 10 degrees of Libra. Okay? So, again, Libra ruled by Venus. Okay, um, the the emerging theme, which you asked me earlier, I'm seeing it more clearly now that we've been talking about it a little sure. further. Once again, is um, you know we're coming back to the heart. Venus is the symbol around what I love, who I love, how I love. Venus is a symbol about what matters most, right? And I. And and my voice just drops a little bit, and that happens to me sometimes while I'm talking about the planet. So how can we bring more softness? How can we bring more heartfelt authenticity, right? There's all of these growing conversations around AI and what's real and what's fake and what is true and what is lies, (laughs) okay? So in some ways... I'm deeply connecting more and more to with this Venus retrograde in Leo, with these planets and points that are uh, connected or ruled by the planet Venus. And we talked about the end of this cycle when uh, Mars is going to go retrograde in Leo, which is not about Venus, but it's connected to the heart. How the, the the bigger story, as I'm reading it, Kathy, is when we as humans and we as authentic creatures on the planet connect into our heart space, our authenticity of our heart, that's actually what keeps us human, right? There's a lot of crazy going on. <laughs> so the deeper... The eclipses are about going deeper. Eclipses are about going quiet. Eclipses are about shutting down so we can reboot, right, as you mentioned earlier. 
wow, can we get even more quiet, soft into the authenticity of our innate intelligence of the heart and allow that to lead, allowing that to lead. So if that was my little cosmic download for the day, I hope that touched someone somewhere. (laughs) It's profoundly empowering. Yeah. Seems to me. Seems to me. Uh So, you know, there's some people who, anyone listening out there who has just a little glimmer of, oh my God, the sky is falling when eclipses are coming. Because there are some people that run around screaming, ah, the eclipses are coming. The eclipses are coming. You should go, yay, (laughs) welcome. (laughs) Welcome eclipse. Welcome transformation. Welcome reboot. (laughs) I can do something with this. And it's fascinating to me, the, all the uh, recurrences and the correlations and the coincidings. These mm-hmm. last, the October 2024 eclipse that you've just described uh, is occurring as Neptune is starting to make its way out of its home sign of Pisces. And by the time this eclipse cycle ends in March of 2025, Neptune's going to be scooting out and going into, oh my, hmm, what sign would that be? Aries. That's right. Aries. So amazing. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So yep. amazing. So it's like, it, it, there's, I had a rubber stamp years and years ago that said, it is as it is, I am as I am, and now is my time. And I would stamp that on this conversation, this eclipse cycle, bam. Beautiful. Beautiful, yeah. Yeah. Well, we're coming toward the end of our time. Uh, Would you tell people all the various places where they can find you? Thank you so much. So uh, my website is called The Love Astrologer. You can look up theloveastrologer.com and you also find my name, Catherine Andron. You can find and follow me in the usual places on Instagram. Look for The Love Astrologer there. When you visit my website, you'll be able to access a free program, which is called Women of Wisdom. And this was a uh, uh, wellness program I created at the Equinox earlier this year. And it's available now so, uh, for individuals who want to have new skills or reminders about our self-care. Kathy and I talked about self-care. It's so valuable and important at this time. Uh, you can learn um, some new tools on the website at The Love Astrologer. So I thank you so much for having me. It's been a delight to chat with you, Kathy, and look at these bigger picture patterns in our... Oh, I really, really appreciate your wisdom, but it seems to me there are a few more places you need to tell people about. Podcast on iHeartMedia, uh, Heart Media Radio, what is that? Yep. So on, on my website at The Love Astrologer, you go to the media page and you'll find uh, 10 archived web, 10 archived podcasts that's on iHeartMedia. So there'll be dynamic discussions on um, evolutionary astrology. On, you can find me on my YouTube channel. That's also The Love Astrologer at The Love Astrologer. It's a modest YouTube channel, but for, for people who are just like learning astrologer, they need reminders of planets, points, the journey through the zodiac. I have some um, very sweet, down-to-earth, informational, uh, <laughs> inspirational at theloveastrologer.com on YouTube. So, um, But I, I really invite you to check out the website and you can grab that free gift called Women of Wisdom. And that's for men and women, but it's like, hey, when we are going through these deep changing times, we need holistic and practical strategies to keep us healthy, safe, and sane. So. <laughs> well, that's a wonderful way of putting it. I yeah. really, really appreciate your being here. I've greatly enjoyed talking to you. Uh, everyone, my forecasts are at empowermentunlimited.net and ontimes.com, and talk to you in two weeks. Very good. Bye for now. <laughs> <laughs>